This is Sean. I want to make this video today about how to choose a good contractor. And I want to frame the question with a story, a recent interaction I had with a client where their front patio was basically holding water really badly. And they had some like landscape beds around it. And I went out there and I said, okay, what I would do here, first of all, this concrete has to be replaced because it's sloping, it's, it's sinking, it's sloping wrong. And I made the suggestion to, to turn this whole area into a patio, get rid of the landscape that was holding the water to begin with, replace the, the sunken old concrete and actually give them a, a outdoor living space. So I try to sell that solution a lot where instead of just spending money and fixing your drainage problem, you spend money, fix your drainage problem, and you have a concrete patio. And so I went out there, I spent some time with the client, and I designed this solution. And so I did take a few days to get him a quote, and my quote was kind of a one-liner because I had spent so much time with them, talking with both homeowners about everything I did make sure they knew about my YouTube channel, but I assumed that they had watched all 300 and some videos of mine, which of course is stupid of me. And I assumed that they knew exactly what I was going to do because I knew what I was gonna do. And so we're gonna come back to that aspect in a little bit. But what ended up happening is they took my idea and went to another contractor and said how much to do this. And the other contractor was vastly cheaper than my bid. And we're gonna talk about what happened on that job and why that contractor perhaps was cheaper. So right away, I wanna make sure you all understand that, that these homeowners reached back out to me. They are just completely distraught on what to do. They reached back out to me and told me the story and I asked them if we could make a video about it and they agreed and so the whole idea of you get what you pay for and they got what they deserve, we're just not even gonna go there because they were, we're, we're, we're moving forward and we're making this video for you all. So we do not need any comments on, and they know, right? They know they got the way they paid for. So we don't, they don't need us to tell them that, that that's what happened because they already know. And so the whole point of this video is going to be, we are going to share exactly what happened here I'm on my way to go talk to the homeowners now. I'm gonna let them talk to you as well. And then I also asked the homeowners when I was on the phone with them the other day, I'm like, what, what could I have done differently? And so that's a very important question for me to ask. And they gave me some really good comments, which you're gonna see uh, in this upcoming interview with them. And so based on what happened, what they experienced, they're gonna be doing things differently when they're looking for and interviewing co potential contractors but I'm also gonna be doing things differently when I'm re-engaging with clients who I've talked to already. So with all that in mind, I hope you all will sit back and take a look at what, this, what happened here and use this as a, a little bit of knowledge and experience on how to pick a good contractor. This is Sean with Gate City Foundation Drainage. I'm here with Christian. And you guys called me out here because you had this, this porch patio area was flooding. You had a bunch of landscape beds right here and it was holding the water on this little piece of concrete and right here. And also over there. Oh, and also the over there. Okay. So I came out, I designed a patio solution to basically get this, this concrete out of here. Now if we take a look at the concrete, we can see that it is pretty much flat. So take a look at that. That concrete is pretty much flat right there. And so what I had originally suggested we do is maybe come up to the top of that step right there and get our new patio and our new concrete grading away and sloping out. I also wanted to extend the concrete like they did here and not only solve this problem, but also create a new patio, right? Yep, that would have been nice. And so I guess I took a few days to get a quote for you and it was pretty much a one-liner. I, I spent like, you know, maybe an hour out here with you talking about what we were gonna do, what, what my plan was. 
but then when I texted you, I pretty much just said, here's the price. And so I didn't, I didn't spell out I was going to include all this other stuff. That's right. I, I, um, you were like, like the first guy that came out here, we, we discounted him right away. Okay, and why you, is that? Um, we didn't, we, he did not have any solutions. He was just following what we were saying. And I really wanted someone to give us a solution. We're the customer, right? So, okay. Okay. We're not concrete people, right? Right. We're, yeah, we're exactly. hiring you guys to do the job, so we wanted solutions. And I told my wife, I said, let him, let him come up with solutions. And he didn't have them for us. He just got her suggestions, a little bit of my suggestions, and just ran with it. Okay. He was gonna, he was going to do things that you said not to do. For example, he was going to put a grate down the whole length of the driveway, right? right which wasn't necessary because you right. came out number two, right? And you did the uh, uh, review with us. And uh, so that's why we discounted him. Okay. Yeah. And so what happened, I texted you my price and you guys texted back and said we found another company. Yeah, so our original goal was to get three quotes. Okay, which is, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it gives you the price and it also, as I said to my wife, I wanted to get ideas about what we could do and I wanted, I wanted professionals to tell me what right. could be done. Right. And different folks have different input so we thought that with that we could be better armed. Right and that's usually a great way to go for sure. <laughs> so we got the third guy out while we were waiting for your quote and he was very headstrong. And Now uh, what do you mean by headstrong? So he was very pushy and headstrong and uh, you can come across as confident knowing what you're doing. I've been doing this since 88 for example he said mm -hmm. uh, and being headstrong that can, can come across as being uh, knowledgeable, mm -hmm. but it could also be a tactic where you get the sale, and that's right. what I feel. That's what I feel like now happened. Okay. So when he gave his quote, uh, it was lower than yours, and at the time we didn't get your quote yet. Right. So we said, okay, we'll do it. Okay. And so that's what happened, and, and he came out and did okay. the job. Uh, and we could so talk, you talk more about that. You basically told him my idea. I did. I said. Uh, we had a suggestion about doing the patio. We thought that was good. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, but, and I, I, we, I, I told them again, I said, the reason we're doing this is to take care of the, the pooling up of water. Right. Over here. Over we want here. that flow of water to be fixed. We had bricks going this way, and you can see partially over there, you can see where we have another bed. Right. So there's a bed over there, a bed state over here, which is remaining. Right. Uh, but it was pooling up, and we knew that, and you told us that. That makes sense. Right. right. So that's what we. So anyway, that was all taken. Anyway, so. Um, but. <clears throat> you know. Um, he came out, and. First of all, he came out at 6.30, which. Very early, but anyway. Uh, so he started doing that side over there. We wanted to expand that a little bit and put a, a trailer, build a park a trailer, and also the garbage cans. Now, when he first mentioned the dimensions, I asked him if he could make a drawing mm -hmm. so that we could get a better idea because he went through it really quick. Mm -hmm. And the dimensions of the garbage cans, we have three garbage cans, and I wanted them to be deep enough that we could roll this way, mm -hmm. roll this way, and then roll the cans in. He only made it wide enough for the cans to go in. Okay. And then you had to you have to stand here and and twist the can. Right. To turn it. Otherwise so he had no no weight. Yeah. So if you'll notice, if you look over there, you'll be you'll be look over there. But he the second time he came out, we had him expand the pan, right. and he I charged us extra to expand it. Okay. He didn't have us approve it the first time. Right. We never we never saw the form, and he just did it. Right. Now, I worked during the day. I worked right. from home. And you know, I can't, you know, unless someone knocks on my door. See, one thing, one thing I do a lot of is I get the customer out here when we're actually forming it up. And I, I tell the customer, I say, when we form it up, I want you out there because you can see where the concrete is. And if you want to change anything, change it. And that makes sense. And that, I mean, that way you avoid any kind of confusion or whatever. And a lot of times the customer will say, can we push it out a little bit more? And I'll, Give them a quick price and say, yeah, we can. You know, you want to do it or not. And to that point, I would have seen that the garbage can wasn't going to fit. Right. And exactly. I would have said expand it, you yeah. know. So, so I always tell people when we're doing concrete that I want to get you out here when we're doing the forming. That way you can really see where the concrete's going to go. And if you want to change it, now's the time. So, so 
he he uh, did that the first day. Mm -hmm. Coming back the next day, we get a text message that says, I have to see, visit my house and wherever. And he disappears for two weeks. Oh, wow. So this is the second part of the job is the patio. Here we are half done. Okay. We half paid him. Okay. Okay. And I say to myself, is this guy going to run away and not come back? Yeah. You know, did he just get some of our money and took off? I mean, yeah. what's the deal here, you know? Wow. And so uh, eventually he did come back and... Uh, he went and did the second thing. Now, learning from the first, I stepped out of here at seven o'clock. He's already grading in with, you know, pulling the dirt out and everything. Uh, and I said, we would like to see the form before you pour. Get out of here, I'm busy. This is what he says to me, okay? Oh, wow. <laughs> so I'm like, well, excuse me, but we want to see what it looks like. Yeah. Oh, okay, you know, and I'm, I'm not, Quoting verbatim, but he did say, he did say to me, "I'm busy." Right. It was kind of a, I didn't, I didn't like that. <laughs> right. Uh, so anyway, um, and I came out ag again with my wife, and he made a rude comment. He said, "Okay, Mr. Gadget," he called me a name, and I was like, "Okay." Huh. Yeah, and my wife said weird. to me, how are you controlling your anger? I said, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I didn't like the way he was treating me. I'm the customer. Right. And I wanted to make sure that this part of the job was right. good. You know, I and see. again, I'm about to start my day, day job. Right. See, when it comes to the customer being out on my jobs, I usually welcome the customer because for one thing, they get the customer gets to see that we're struggling and we're getting it right. And the second thing is, the customer gets to see what they're paying for. And so I don't have any problem. Now I have had customers who are like, are you sure that's right, are you sure that's right? <laughs> and I've handed them a level. Yeah. It's a check whatever you want with the level, check it. So, but I, I, I think it's a red I flag. I want to say hello too. I, I yeah. just, I want, because he's coming to my home, he's starting to do the work. Yeah. He could have taken 30 seconds to a minute to shake my hand. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, um, so what are, what are some of the concerns you have? Um, so, um, I mean, obviously, first of all, they didn't take this concrete up. Yeah, you were going to take the concrete out and make points. it make the grading a little steeper. Right, bring uh, it up to the bottom. Of because that the point step. was to direct the water out. So, right. we did put a hose on this. It it is coming out and flowing out, but it's leaving a small puddle over here. Now the work is done by this guy, so we're pretty much going to have to live with that. Right. But it's not a huge puddle. Now you pointed out which. I only see better now today. These are sinking. These should have been replaced like you were suggesting anyway. Right, right. It's also pulling away from the house. Right, yeah. So you would have fixed that. Yeah, I would have just gone back with new concrete. And we, we could have come up quite a bit because there's two ways to achieve fall. You can go down, well, let's say you can go down or you can come up. Right. And so we have all that fall right there. We could have just come up and... and because there's already, some of it out. already proved that this is working, which is what you were going to do, but you right. would lift up even more. Right. And it would have been all one piece. The other thing is, I don't know what his intentions were over here on that spout, but he pulled it out, he cracked the cement, repaired the cement, and then he didn't fix the spout. He left it sticking out. Right. Okay. I would have, and I still suggest putting an elbow on that because now that the concrete is, is flowing right, just dump the water onto the concrete and let it flow and that's away. that's what we'll do then. Yeah. Uh, but I was upset that he left it like that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, do you want to walk around yeah, to the sure. other side? Yeah, sure. We're not, we're still going. We're still going. <laughs> yep. It's, it's going full. So, okay, on so, this side. Yeah. The pool, the pooling of water was really bad at this spot and we had bricks here and another little like a landscape bed yeah so, so the bed was high and it was holding water right here it's like a dam right and and we knew this it needed right. to be cleared out right and you checked the level here and you said it would go this way and i said well i don't remember who suggested expanding it or, or, or anything mm -hmm. but something about us parking a trail i thought it was a great idea we might have come up with it yeah. earlier but we suggested that we expand this area so we could park my trailer here right exactly but it was great so um you came up with some should also the garbage can we thought as long as you're here let's get a pad for the garbage right, can yeah. we're always walking in the mud so take a look at what this, what this concrete guy did he turned this into a low point and the concrete's going uphill right there and the reason he did that check it out 
he didn't want to grade this concrete down. So normally what you do with concrete is you cut down whatever grade and then you put it back with concrete so that you are now flush. But he didn't do that. So all this fall, he, he pretty much ruined. And now you have a hump in the concrete right there. And he put in this little pipe, which is not gonna really do anything. So I suggested that the homeowners try to try to cut some of this grade out of here so that the water can stay on the surface and flow. If they had cut this down properly to the level of the ground, the concrete would have been lower over here and it would have just the whole concrete would have been the solution. So my idea here was the concrete was gonna be the drainage solution. You said it's in the concrete? <laughs> yeah. And this guy pretty much just poured some concrete That's in. That's it. He just put a form and poured it in here. Yeah. And the other thing was, and you pointed this out, for me, okay, this was this is horrendous what he left. That he left this here. This right. is his job finished. Right. <laughs> yep, exactly. What, what is what is the who does this? Yeah. I typically include finish grading, but as we mentioned, I didn't say that I was gonna do that. So And that's a really strong point. Right. Uh, when you see what he did in the back, right? Uh, he just totally blew my mind what he did with the dirt that he moved. We'll see that in a minute. Right. Uh, but that would be a great sailing point because when you come in and the grass looks great, the home looks great, and mm -hmm. then you destroy it, and then you send a text message afterward that says, we have to get a landscaper. It always gets messed up. That's what he said to me. Wow. Yeah. I, I'm saying, what are you talking about? <laughs> I paid you to do this work. Yeah. That means come in, do the work, finish, get out. Yeah. There's what additional? There's yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Hire someone else to finish my job. Right. Right. And he told me to cut this up and, and fix it. Yeah. Maybe yeah. tell. What he's telling me to do it. That's yeah. why I hired him. Yeah. Well, let's go sit back down and all right. Talk about some of the stuff we could have done differently. Well, that's something. But look what you did. This is my backyard. Look at the chunks concrete he threw back here and all the shrubbery and roots and everything yeah so he just used this as a dumping dumping ground. site and this who does this who leaves who leaves someone's backyard like this 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 is not um this is this is a residential area right this yeah. is a house this is not a construction site for a big building <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying Look at that slab of concrete over there. Yeah. I couldn't believe he did this. I mean, if I had done something like this, I would have graded it flat, seeded it, and strawed it. I was suggesting, you know, because this was such a deep. Right. I was suggesting fill that in some. Right. I mean, it does make so sense. So it's not as yeah. not as deep because yeah. I have to go up and down John Deere. Yeah, it does make sense. I thought sense. It, there's a lot of dirt. I thought it made sense because I, I I ride this thing like a Bronco. Yeah. Up and down, you know? Yeah. So. Wow. I saw this. That was my second blow up. <laughs> oh, man. So I told my wife, don't fix that. I'm going to have Mr. YouTube come out here. <laughs> yeah. You know. I hope this stuff helps for you. I hope it does too. Hopefully it'll help my viewers too. Yeah. Do that closing with I was talking about, you know? Okay. So you know the the saying hindsight's fifty fifty, right? That's all you can do. What what could we have done differently here? What do you think now so, knowing what you know now? I really love how you said that you would um, after the fact you said that you would level it and take care of all this and leave the job like it should be right everything finished and part of the problem is i i thought you were going to review my youtube videos and i just for some reason i just assumed oh yeah that you were going to see all my concrete work yeah and know that that's how i was going to leave that's it. a great point because my wife did the research looked at the youtubes right uh she picked you out to i looked about 30 seconds i said that looks like some good work yeah and we got you out here and then i think at that point if you had mentioned the things that we're talking about right um at that time to, to close it you know I think right that would have been great so yeah um because my bid was quite a bit more than yeah, what he charged and i didn't really mind that mm -hmm. um of course we liked the price was lower but we have to 
uh, measure our decision based on everything being equal. Right, and exactly. And everything looked equal. Right, exactly. <laughs> Up to and that point. So that was really my fault for not getting back with some of the specifics. And, you know, when I, when I come out here and I, I give a customer a quote, I have a really good idea of what I'm saying. That doesn't mean you have a good idea of what I'm saying. And so that's just a way that, that things can get lost in the mix between talking about the job, doing the job, especially if you get someone else to do the job and you try to tell them what I was going to do and, you know, things like this just get left here. And so um, I think going forward in the future, I'm going to try to just spell out a little. The other thing I noticed was your reply back to me that we had found someone else, thanks. That was right in line with my original message that said, here's the price for the work. So I gave you a one-liner, you gave me a one-liner. Yeah. And so th that does seem to, to follow. So I kind of set the, the tone there when I should have said, here's the price and I'm going to include blah, 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 blah. That would have alerted you that that was even a thing. Did you even know finish no. grading was a thing? No, because here's <laughs> the thing. I figured it was just part of the job, get it done. My grass was great when you came in. My landscaping was okay. Right. It should have been left that way. Right, I didn't exactly. even think that someone would traipse over the equipment and not fix it afterwards because right. I looked at it as part of the job, not right. just concrete. So uh, what, what happened when you tried to call the guy back and ask him? I tried, time to test. So I tried to call him and he said, text me. Okay. So I texted him and said, please call. We have some things to talk about. And then my wife texted him. He texted back a few things, one of them which was, uh, the landscape always gets messed up, hire a landscaper. That was one of the things he said. Yeah. She wanted to get this caulked over here. He promised to do it when we when we set up the job. Right. He didn't do it. Right. Okay. He promised my wife that he would come back to do that. I don't think he'll even show up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I think he just comes in, bam, bam, bam. He does the thing. He collects the money. I'm thinking he goes to customers. He burns and, and moves on and doesn't even get repeat work. Yeah. Afterwards, we found you, you know, posts about him. He was taking it to court and that kind of thing, and the negative things that were talking how they messes up their land and everything. Oh wow! Fortunately, we didn't research the third time as good as we did the second time. Right. <laughs> you know, right. so we didn't see all that. Right. Until okay. It was too late. So, going through all this, what can you tell my viewers about how to choose a contractor based on what you've experienced here? Uh, do your research. We, we kind of uh, didn't follow through on the third one. The third one, we should have looked a little more on the research and, and researched that company a little bit more. Um, <clears throat> Do you think you were just distracted by the price? Uh, I think uh, the second guy was very quick in getting back, and you took a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And so because we had nothing else to go by, we okay. wanted to move forward. Right. So we went ahead and went with it. Okay, before um, you got my price. Before I got your price. Okay. Your price was like three or four days later or something. Okay. Wait, not four days, it was probably two or three days later. Yeah, you know? okay. Um, so it just seemed like a little bit longer. Um, so, yeah, I just, uh, I, I really think it goes back to when you're standing here and you're visiting us, doing those closing points. Mm -hmm. um, this thing here. Talk about what other concrete people do and what you do differently. Why should I, why should I go with you versus someone else? Right. I think that's the biggest thing to right. get out of this. Yeah. Um, what could have we had done? I don't know. We could have done much more, mm -hmm. uh, other than what I already mentioned, which was make sure you research every single one of mm -hmm. your the folks you're considering. You know. And what about paying your contractor before he's completely or before you're completely satisfied. So we satisfied. did pay in half which I thought was reasonable. Yeah that's reasonable. Um, but we made a mistake in uh, not checking his work before we made the final payment. Right. So he's paid and gone. Right. And we're seeing all this stuff. Right. And uh, and you may not have even really known to to think about these things. No, and all these things. And there's are a lot of stuff up. going yeah. on, and he's still here, and you're maybe maybe he's going to finish that before. I'm working during the day, he, and you know, yeah, <laughs> you know so. Uh, don't pay, uh, I think it's okay to pay half up front. Mm -hmm. I think that's typical. As long as they're you know. somewhat reputable. I think so. Maybe a third. I mean, you got materials and stuff. But I think if you've been in business a while, you should be able to, right. uh, you should be able to pay for your materials and everything up front. Right. Without having to rely on the customer's payment. Right. I poured, um, I poured, what, 13 yards a couple days ago, and I haven't paid the concrete plant yet because I've got a line of credit there. Yeah. 
So if you're a business, been a, been in business for a while, you should you should have a cash flow right uh, reserve. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you know? um, or you should have a, a good relationship with your suppliers, yeah. your material suppliers, yeah, they and your supply gonna, houses. They're going to get paid, right? Yeah. So, um, but okay. Uh, what was the other question you had? Uh, um, what just what could you tell people about? about what you might have done differently and paying and that sort so, of thing? So, um, yeah, the, 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 the payment was definitely a showstopper. We should have checked the work and then not paid him. Right, until, until you were until happy. Until we talked about the stuff to, to take care of the stuff. Yeah. I don't think he would have fixed very much of any of it. I don't know how much he would have done. I think if we didn't pay him, maybe we could have had him do a few more things, such as fix that. And, mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I think in the back, uh, he left all the dirt he took. He said, well, I can save you $200 if you want to put the dirt somewhere else. I said, well, we have a downgrade in our land. Right, I said, which if makes you sense. fill that out and, and level it out some, it'll make it easier for me to mow up and down my John Deere. Right. So what he did is he took all this dirt plus all the concrete slabs all the roots, shrubbery that he right. pulled up, he dumped it in the middle of my yard in the back. Yeah, and left made it. Made a big mound. Yeah. And now I gotta clean this up. It's yeah. gonna cost me more than two hundred dollars to clean it up. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So that that's so unprofessional. Yeah. That's so unprofessional. So are you guys gonna post some pictures of this job and yeah. maybe try to put some heat on him? I uh, absolutely. Um, your video is gonna come go up. You don't have his name, but I'm gonna give out his name. Okay. Uh, in my videos. Um, okay, yeah. But, uh, and Better Business Bureau, whatever mm -hmm. else we can do. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to call local news, but my wife didn't really want to go. Yeah, I have had luck with that before. Where, I think that's where people a good approach. Do. I don't know yeah. if we'll get through that, but yeah. uh, certainly online, uh, Better Business Bureau. Other than that, it's a small business, it's a small claim. Oh, one more important thing. Don't ever have someone do work unless you have a contract and you sign it and it's written out. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. We missed that part and, you know, that was so dumb. We know better. Yeah. Have them write out what they're going to do. All he said on, on the proposed contract was laying out X, X square feet of concrete. He didn't list anything else. Right. And I didn't even sign it. Right. He doesn't even sign contract. <laughs> right. <laughs> so wow. He came in here, word of mouth. You know, you know listen. A handshake means a lot to me, right? Mm -hmm. That's a contract to me, but mm -hmm. not everybody's like that. Yeah, exactly. You know, so if I if I say I'm going to do something and I shake your hand, I'm yeah. going to follow through. Yeah. My wife has you know, gotten on me about that. It's like, well, honey, a handshake is a contract. I'm not going back on it. Yeah. So, so that's sometimes you forget that everybody is like that. Yeah, exactly. Get just get it written out, okay, and uh, make sure you list everything that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Don't make any assumptions. You know. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going to take this as a learning experience and try to try to give a better projection to my future clients of what what I'm all including and not just, you know, what we talked about. And here's a number because maybe they don't quite fully understand what what's in my head about how this is going to basically finish off and be left. And so I definitely appreciate you reaching back to, to me and letting me come out here and talk to you about what happened here. Obviously, it's it's kind of a mess and, and you know <laughs> we can't really do anything about the past can't yeah. can't do anything so. but if we have future con work, crack concrete work right you know, exactly to, you know we do have stuff in the back going on that could be stuff in the future you know but yeah and we do have friends my wife um, will definitely talk really good about folks who do a good job you haven't done work for us but I feel like you would do a great job yeah you know and I would definitely call you okay you know, well thank I'm, you I'm gonna tell we're gonna tell other people call you mm -hmm. um, you know because we'll give out your number because uh, you know of course we'll tell them evaluate right so mm -hmm. but uh, this other guy my wife is very good at promoting or demoting yeah so she's gonna <laughs> demote the other guy <laughs> yeah well maybe that'll be enough to get him to come over here and fix some of this you stuff know, you never know make it look a little bit better but we're gonna move forward and we're gonna get yeah. a landscaper we're gonna get that mound of concrete and stuff taken care of. We're gonna have yeah. neighbors take away dirt, yeah. use it and stuff. Do whatever it takes. So, and we'll get it done. So. Okay. Well, I'd definitely like to thank you for agreeing to talk about and share your experience. And the whole idea here is that we're gonna help out others and help out other viewers and try to, try to give an idea of what happened here and possibly why it happened and how we can go forward and how you all can go forward and maybe do a little bit better than we did here. Sounds good.
All right. Well, thanks again. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> cool. Thank you. This was definitely an interesting situation that we had here. And so the first thing I want to do is I want you all to join me in thanking these homeowners for getting back in touch with me and letting and explaining the situation to me and letting, letting me make this video. And we, we all made this video with the intent of helping you all, the viewers, and maybe sharing some of the experience we went through. So there's definitely a lot of corners that can be cut on concrete work. And like the, the homeowner mentioned, I didn't really spell out in my quote. Actually, I, I, I gave them a price. Typically what I'll do is I'll go talk about what I'm gonna do, I'll give them a price for that. If they like the price, then I'll write out a contract. And so that that interim between the contract and where I, I was out there on the day, I didn't get across that I was gonna do all these extra things like finish grading and taking up the old concrete and making sure everything was right. And so I think I relied too heavily on my YouTube channel because I have customers, like I've got a customer right now and I went out there, I was like, we'll do this. He's like, do it. When can we start? And then I sent my concrete guy out there a couple days ago and I called the homeowner and I was like, I'm sending the, the concrete guy out to take a look. And he's like, oh, Brian. And so that's the difference. He, he, that, that customer watches a ton of my, my channel and knows exactly what they're going to get. This con, this customer they had just, he said he watched 30 seconds of my channel. And so I made the assumption that, that these homeowners in this video knew exactly what I was going to be providing. And that was a mistake on my part. And so I've learned a lot from this. There, I did a recent concrete job where same kind of thing, went out, talked to the customer for like an hour. And I was like, and I really had to, to push my solution because they're like, the problem's down here. The, the symptoms down here and I'm like the problem is up here with all this this water being held and so I had to work with them and again I texted them a price I talked to them about that and then they they came back with like a barrage of questions they were like how thick is the concrete going to be is it going to have plastic under it are you going to remove all the old debris and the exact same situation as this one they were trying to spell out and make sure that that I was going to provide all that stuff and even knew, even though I knew I was going to provide it they didn't necessarily know and so putting reflecting on on that recent situation really puts it into perspective that i need to be doing a better job of explaining exactly what i'm going to be doing to somebody and, and they may have gotten screwed over by previous contractors and so they're simply trying to spell everything out which is fine so anyway um i'm, al I'm also kind of thinking about making a video on some of the shortcomings of, of concrete work and so just like you saw where this guy didn't cut the ground down to make space for the concrete, he just poured the concrete on top of the ground. I see that all the time where you see a new driveway and it's like that far up off the ground to where if you step off the driveway, you're stepping down onto the ground. That's a classic example of the, con the contractor did not cut the ground down and grade it right. He just poured the concrete on top of the ground and called it a day. So there, I've been thinking about making a video of some of the, the ways that concrete work can be cut. And uh, let me know if you'd like to see something like that. I'm definitely getting a little bit bogged down with videos. As you've noticed, I haven't put out a whole lot of videos in the last few months. So um, I'm trying to get back into it and re-energized to make videos again. So with that, hopefully you enjoyed this video, found it useful. If you did, you know what to do. And I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. This is Sean. I hope you all enjoyed this video, even though it's a little bit different than my normal content. If you've got any stories with working with contractors, let us all know in the comments below. All right. Thanks again. And hopefully I will see you on the next one. Take care.